Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at how to reveal the hidden b in the transform square root function. So in your notebook, please put today's subtitle, Revealing the Hidden B in the Square Root Function. We're going to begin this lesson by first reminding ourselves what the rule of a transform square root function looks like when it's written in proper format. It looks like the following. y equals a multiplied by the square root of b times x minus h and then plus k. Now the big question is why is this considered proper format? Well it's considered proper format because of the fact that the coefficient in front of the x is a positive 1. So the next question that comes to your mind should be what would the rule look like if it was not written in proper format? Well here's a nice simple example. We have y equals 3 multiplied by the square root of 4x plus 8 and minus 5. You should notice immediately that this is not written in proper format because the coefficient on, in front of the x is not a 1. In this example, it's a 4. So, how do we get rid of the coefficient in front of the x and turn it into a 1? Well, the simplest way to get rid of that 4 is to apply our good old common factor technique to the expression 4x plus 8. Observe the procedure. So, the next line of work will be y equals 3 multiplied by the square root of. Now, let's apply to the, co the common factor technique to the 4x plus 8. So, we'll factor out the 4, and the result of the common factor technique is we have x plus 2, and then the minus 5 is never touched. Now, following the factoring procedure, you can already see that the true value of b is 4, and more importantly, the true value of h is actually negative 2. But, we're going to go just a little bit further and clean up our final rule using the properties of square roots. Which property am I referring to? I'm referring to the property of the square root of a product. So if we apply that property, we end up with y equals 3 multiplied by. Now the property states that if you have the square root of a product, then the two items in the product can be yanked apart. So we have square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of x plus 2. And then the minus 5 again is never touched. And doing one final cleanup, we have y equals 3 multiplied by the square root of 4 is 2. And we have the x plus 2 and minus 5. And our final completely cleaned up rule is y equals 6 multiplied by the square root of x plus 2 minus 5. So what the cleaning up procedure did is not only did it take out the b value, it combined the b value with the a value. And that's perfectly allowable. All right, I want you guys to try an example on your own. Suppose I give you the rule y equals negative 0.5 multiplied by the square root of 0.04x plus 8 and plus 2. This is not in proper format. So I want you to put it into proper format. Go ahead, pause the video, and try it now. All right, let's see how you guys did. So first things first, I'm going to apply the common factor technique to the expression inside the radical. So the next step would be y equals negative 0 0.5. Multiply the square root of, here comes the common factor technique. So I'm going to factor out the 0.04. And the result from the common factor technique leaves behind an x plus 200. And the k value is never touched. Already, you can see that the true b value is 0.04. And more importantly, the true h value is negative 200. But let's go one step further with a final cleanup. So y equals negative 0 0.5. Now apply the... Um, property of 
square root of a product. That will give us square root of negative 0 0.04 multiplied by the square root of x plus 200 and the k value is never touched. One final cleanup y equals negative 0 0.5 multiplied by the square root of 0 0.04 is 0 0.2 multiplied by the square root of x plus 200 and the k value is still never touched. And finally that gives us y equals negative 0 0.1 multiplied by the square root of x plus 200 and then plus 2. Nicely cleaned up. Next, I would like to do another example that will produce a very interesting problem. I want you to do this one. y equals 2 multiplied by square root of negative 9x plus 18 plus 6. Again, notice that this is not in proper format because the coefficient on the x is not a positive 1. So, let's apply the procedure like normal. y equals 2. I'm going to apply the common factor technique. So, inside the square root symbol, it will become negative 9 multiplied by x minus 2. And the k value is never touched. And then to do our cleanup, we apply the pro uh, property of the square root of a product, which gives us the following y equals 2 multiplied by the square root of negative 9 multiplied by the square root of x minus 2. And then the k value, of course, is never touched. Well, at this stage, we're stuck in a cleanup procedure. Can you see exactly what's wrong with this picture? Well, good for you if you realize that you cannot have the square root of a negative number. So we've got a problem right here. How do we solve it? Well, to efficiently deal with this problem, let's rewind one step. Let's go back to the step where we've completed our common factoring, but before we've applied the property of the square root of a product. From this step, as we apply the property of the square root of a product, instead of sticking the negative sign with the 9, we are allowed to stick the negative sign with the x minus 2. So it will make it look like this. y equals 2 multiplied by positive 9. Notice that I did not stick the negative sign with the 9, but instead I'm going to stick the negative sign with the x minus 2. And yes, the x minus 2 does need to be in the bracket. And then the k value remains untouched. Now we have bypassed the problem. And to finish our final cleanup, we have 2 multiplied by the square root of positive 9 is 3. And multiplied by the square root of negative of x minus 2. 6. And finally, we get y equals 6 times the square root of negative x minus 2 and then plus 6. Notice that now we can clearly see that the b value is in fact negative. Why don't you try one of these tricky situations on your own? Example, y equals negative 2 multiplied by the square root of negative 4x minus 12 plus 3. Go ahead, pause the video and try it on your own. All right, let's see how you guys did. So first things first, I'm going to apply my common factor technique like usual. So that will give me negative 2 multiplied by the square root of negative 4 times x plus 3 and plus 3. Now, Let's apply the property of the square root of a product, but let's stick the negative sign with the x plus 3 instead of the 4. So this will give us y equals negative 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of n negative 
of x plus 3 and n plus 3. That will give us y equals negative 2 times 2 times the square root of negative of x plus 3 plus 3. And finally, we get y equals negative 4 times the square root of negative x plus 3 and then plus 3. And we are done. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we reveal the true value of b and, in the process, the true value of h.